Welcome to Kentuckiana Real Talk, hosted by Jeremy Ward. If you enjoy the podcast, please subscribe on the podcast provider of your choice and consider subscribing to the Jeremy Ward Team YouTube channel for more expert real estate insights. Now, let's start the show. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Anna Real Talk. Today, I'm here with Debbie Brown of Ward Realty Services. She is one of my uh, most experienced agents in the brokerage. Debbie, can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into real estate? Oh, gosh, that's a long story. Yes, it is. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so um, I graduated from Bellarmine University, and I graduated magnum cum laude. (laughs) You didn't know I was smart, right? (laughs) Um, but anyway, I um, I had a degree in economics and history, and while I was at Bellarmine, I interned for Bank of Louisville. Oh, wow. And at the Bank of Louisville, I actually interned in the mortgage department. So once I got a taste of that, I was like, oh, I love this. I love serving people. I love meeting people. I got to go on runs with these guys. I was oh, wow. like in tune with these brokers, you know? And so I was like, okay, because I was actually thinking about, this is so weird, going into the foreign service. Um, because I have a background, my background's a little bit different than everyone else. Mm-hmm. And, um, but that wouldn't have been family oriented okay. and I knew I wanted to start a family and all that. So, um, when I worked for them, I was like, oh, this is what I can do. This is what I'll do. And so, um, when I graduated, I went and worked for PNC bank at that time. They had a mortgage department. They were starting from Evansville. Okay. They had just moved to Louisville and I worked with them for a while. And then I ended up coming to Southern Indiana and working for a brokerage there. Um, I did that till 2008. Oh, wow. And then when the mortgage um, crashed, the whole system crashed, right? We had mm-hmm. the, big, the big crash. Um, Andrew, my husband, I had got, I was actually the first uh, loan officer. Did you know that? No. Yeah, I was. Um, I got him into the business. So you were a loan officer before Andrew Brown, who was, I was. on our show last week. Mm-hmm. Tons of experience. Yep. So you were first. I was first. And, um, and then while I was pregnant with our second child, no, our, our second child at that time, um, I got really sick one day and he had to go cover for me in one of my classes. Well, then he met someone and they got him into the business. Uh, so I always tell him like, I got him into yeah, it, you, you know, did. it was all me. You hooked him up. Yeah, I did. I hooked <laughs> him up. But, um, but anyway, so then, um, at that point in 2008, we were both like, okay, the crash has happened. We knew we wanted to stay in the business, but we also needed, you know, we, it was taking, what, 30, 60 days, 90 days to close a deal. We were both 100% commission, and it was like, okay, one of us needs to go get a salary job, yeah. and the other one needs to stay. And I just felt like Andrew's passion, he had more passion for it than I did. And and I'm just, a, I'm, I'm the warrior, right? I was like, <laughs> I need stability. I need security. <laughs> and, um, and so I went to the Corps of Engineers. And I worked as a budget analyst there for like the next three or four years. Well, it wasn't like my dream job or anything. I I mean, I loved working with the people, but it just, I missed the interactions. Yeah. I missed being out of the office. I missed um, just serving others in a different capacity instead of being in a cubicle. And so um, in 2000, I think it was about 12, um, I was like, okay, I'm ready to get back in the business. And Andrew and I talked about it, and it was like, it really wouldn't serve us both to be loan officers. Mm -hmm. And so I got my real estate license at that point. Yeah. And then I had my children were all like teenagers and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to be home with them, but do this part time. And so I did that part time really until I came on with you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I did that part time and I loved it and it was great. And I served um, mainly family, friends, and my church family. Mm -hmm. Um, And then... Once the kids grew up and I hit that empty nest, which just happened a couple years ago, um, I was like, okay, my husband works so many hours. Yeah, he does. He is on the phone all the time. And I was like, I'm not, I'm going to get annoyed with him. I'm going to sit here and twiddle my thumbs. I can go find a hobby or I can really dig in and see what I can do because I hadn't really had a chance to really put all my effort into real estate. Well, and you love serving people. I mean, that's that's I part of your it. makeup. Like that gives you an outlet to serve the people and to make a few bucks along the way. Yes, so. Um, it's so much fun. I, I absolutely love it. And so um, at that point, I believe um, we we got together right around that time. Yeah. It was kind of yeah. perfect timing. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you have just so pushed me so outside <laughs> my comfort zone. This is so outside my comfort zone. <laughs> and um, and I remember doing these videos and everything, and all of a sudden my business started mm-hmm. picking up and taking off. And um, and I and I give all that to you, Jeremy. Like you well, have been an amazing coach. 
Um, I never thought I could do the stuff that I'm doing and how busy I've gotten. And I knew I could do the work because yes. I've always done well with school and I've done and everything I've done. I've always succeeded, but I just didn't know if I could do the workload. And and it's been it's been fun. I've really you, been able to do it. You've been amazing. You've been rocking Thank it you. out and all this energy goes into these deals and into these people yeah and if anybody knows debbie like she's just full of love and energy and just wants to help everybody so it's just a perfect perfect thing for it's you it's a perfect fit i love tell it tell me tell me a little bit more about uh about uh your upbringing your background okay kind of some of the things that's helping you in your business today so um would you think that my english is my second language um, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so I always want to start off with that. Most people wouldn't think that I was actually born in Brazil. Um, my mom is Brazilian. My dad's American. I lived there till I was nine. Um, and then we moved to the United States and I had to learn how to speak English when I was six. Oh my goodness. My dad threw me straight into first grade and he was like, okay, we're going to get you a tutor. You need to learn your ABCs. Cause they didn't speak English to me. You know, I was, all I need, all I knew was Portuguese and uh, so I learned my ABCs. It took me about two years to adjust. Mm -hmm. um, and then by third grade, I had it. You know, wow. I was like, okay, I'm, I, I was doing well in school at that point. Um, yeah, so then, so then in high school, I took Spanish because it was like easy A. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now I can say I speak Spanish, Portuguese, and English. So. Well, that's yeah. been amazing. I mean, there's, there's so many uh, people out there mm -hmm. th that have the language barriers and I feel like they're just truly underserved because of the language mm -hmm. barrier. I mean, I see it in our business. Uh, you know, that's, I'm so happy to have you on a board. I can, you know, somebody comes in and they, they speak Spanish or whatever. Like I can send them your way and you can take good care of them. And, yeah. and that means a lot. I mean, it, it's, sure. it's, it's a very unserved market out there. I feel like. Well, and I really appreciate that because it's a way for me to connect with my culture mm -hmm. because, you know, whether it's a Hispanic, Hispanic cultures are all the same. And so, you know, I wouldn't say they're all the same, but we're very similar. Right. Okay. And so it, it's a great way for me to connect. I understand the culture, you know, and, and then just to have the practice of getting to speak the language because I don't get to do that. Right. You know, right. and then to do it in a way that I can serve people and love them and take care of them and not let them be taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. You know, I always I joke with Andrew, you might have to cut this out. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm like, listen, don't mess with my people. I cut you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't mess with my people. Because, you know, I'm protective. No, that's protective. I am protective of my people. Don't mess with them. <laughs> that's good. That's good. I'm a, I'm a little bit of a, a papa bear for my people, too. It's yeah. like, you know, you can mess with me, but whatever you do, don't mess with my people or my money. <laughs> that's right. Just don't, don't do it. Don't do it. It'd be bad for you. So it's been a great way to serve, and I really enjoy it. And and I'm not perfect at it. I mean, there's things that I forget because I don't have the practice sure. all the time, you sure. know. But it's wonderful because they'll help you, you know, whatever. If I don't know a word or something, we figure it out. You, you kind of work together. Yeah, to we work out. together. And I've actually um, just, I don't know, just made a lot of friends in the community that I wouldn't have known otherwise if, well, I, would, if I wasn't doing I've this. never known anybody meet you and not like you. So, oh. so you're doing a good job <laughs> there. Because believe me, I've had people that's 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 called in on somebody they didn't like right oh yeah but uh never with you debbie it's always a, a good review oh well thank so you so you've been doing this for a while mm -hmm. uh you've been a loan officer you've been an agent yes. you're the lead agent for murphy homes now mm -hmm. tell me tell me a funny story that's happened to you during your career in real estate what's the most memorable funny story you have oh my gosh okay so this is the most embarrassing story okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, I think I had just started with you maybe yeah. like, I don't even think a month. Right. And here I am. I'm trying to impress Jeremy. I'm trying to be like really good and mean people. And I think you had encouraged me to do the videos. Yes. Yeah. And so I, so that was outside my comfort zone and I was doing the videos and a high school friend of mine that lives over an hour away. I grew up in Perry County. Okay. And so I graduated from Perry Central. Um, and so she calls me and she's like, Debbie, I've been seeing your videos and we have a rental property out in New Albany. Do you think you could list that? Because they had let her, their daughter live in it while she was going to IUS. And, and I was like, yeah, I can help you with that. We'll meet out there, you know. And part of the listing thing is that you go out and you meet and you have to take measurements of all the rooms and all that. Mm -hmm. Well, that was before I had my little handy dandy little laser thing. <laughs> right. And I had the actual tape measure and all that. And um, so I didn't know what I was doing at that point. <laughs> I mean, I did, but I was like, I had to take my, now I'm like, I'm, I'm you were old probably, school. I was old school. But after that, after this little incident, I was like, I need the laser. <laughs> 
So anyway, so she's helping me because I always, you know, we're going through the home and she's holding one end of the tape and I'm holding the other and we go down to the basement and part of it's not finished. You know, how okay. you have a little unfinished area and that's where she's got the, the washer and dryer. And I just see that I'm like zoned out. I'm not apparently not aware of my surroundings. And I go and I set my paperwork on top of that because I got to take measurements and sure. write it down. And, um, so I go and I set myself down and I grab my tape measure and I take two steps back and boom, like I just, I fall to the ground. My, I feel my leg is wet and I'm like, what just happened? I look over at her and her eyes are like this big. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I look down and I had fell in there. Something. Oh my goodness. Oh my I know. And I'm like, and I'm like, oh my God, I kind of broke my leg. Like I was in these like stuff down there and I was like, oh my gosh. So I pull it up and I'm so embarrassed. And this is like. You know, I mean, we were close, but not super close. Like, I was just, I was so embarrassed. I was like, this does not look professional, but that's okay. <laughs> so if it's going to happen, it's going to happen to me anyway. So I pulled out. So at that point, we realize I'm not hurt. Right. So we're both just about peeing our pants. We're laughing so hard, you know. And then I have to take my shoes off because they're soaking wet. <laughs> I can't go around her house with my shoes wet. We're not done doing, we started in the basement. We're waking our way up. I'm walking around holding my shoes. You know, it's dripping. My pants are wet. I can't even see Jamie afterwards to give her my paperwork. And she's like, what is all on your pants? I'm like, I fell on the sump up. It's fine. So, yeah. I think you did a video great. right after that. I did. I got a few views on that one. <laughs> I yeah. do remember that story. I remember laughing my tail off from your video. And I remember the views on that video just going up, up, yep. up, up. Everybody wanted to see. You know, everybody wants to see us mess up, right? Yeah, yeah. Nobody wants to see us just doing a good job. You got to laugh at yourself, you know? And it was and it was fun. And what was really funny is I went out there and I'm like looking for some support. And I'm like, hey, has anybody ever had this happen to them? And I literally had people be like, no, no, that's never happened. <laughs> nope, to not us. me. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> Only you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, that's that funny. Keeps me humble. Yeah, Good. it does. Um, yeah. It. Uh, I've seen several funny uh, real estate YouTube videos of people mm -hmm. falling down and stuff. But I'd really like to have a video on you that day. Oh gosh. That that would have been worthwhile. So let's get back to a little more serious note. So as I sure. mentioned before, you're the lead agent for Murphy Homes, uh -huh. uh, Chase Murphy and Murphy Enterprises. Dave, you guys have came a long way in a short period of time. Uh, yeah. You guys came over and started working with us in 2020, right before the COVID. Mm -hmm. um, had some houses kind of sitting around, uh, had a lot going. And then one thing led to another and uh, you stepped in and I've seen the quality improve. I've seen the um just you guys are just chase has put together a really good team with his punch list guy his mm -hmm. foreman's like it's just really good product that i'm seeing you know, being produced and, and on time so you want to tell me a little bit more about how that came about and what you guys are doing to, to help the buyers out there today sure so i think the main thing is where we focus back on our foundation is getting the foundation right and then also we're focused on our brand yeah. you know we're focused on we want to have a good quality home at an affordable price. So that's been the focus. And when I came in, I, Andrew calls me a natural manager. I think that's his way of saying that I'm bossy. <laughs> well, if know. you can He's manage him, nice. you've you done know? something. Yeah. So, um, so when I came in, I um, basically, I just really started working with his project manager who had only been there the last couple years with his punch list guys. And so when I'm working with them, it's more than just real estate. I'm not just working with the buyers and with the sellers. Like I'm literally... Every single day we're communicating on what's going on and where we're at. And I'm updating them on, you know, like when are these loans closing and what's going on with the buyers. And then they're updating me on where we are with the house and, and really lines of communication. Yeah. I would say that is the number one thing and answering my phone, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Answer, if you answer your phone, your business is going to take That's 90% off. of it. That's 90% of it. And I would say that to any agent that would be watching. Answer right. your phone. Yep. You Absolutely. know, take care of whatever and don't postpone it. Like if there's a problem, just figure it out and go take care of it. I don't put anything in the back burner. I mean, it's this morning I had assess the assessor thing is off this morning. Oh, and, uh, and they're got, they've got, the, so I've already called them and I'm, you know, just taking care of that because I need to, I need to have it done. So. No, it's it's really shown up. I mean, uh, you know, Murphy Homes was a great company when we started working mm -hmm. together, but I've just really seen it getting polished. Uh, yeah. The numbers are going up. You guys mm -hmm. are selling more homes. We had an open house down at your town homes in mm -hmm. uh, Sellersburg a week or so ago, and I was really impressed with the layout, the quality. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you've got a model home there where people can come in and sit and kind of get a feel for how you know it's got furniture in it and everything. Oh, yeah. Stage, it's beautiful. Thank and you. And for the price point, I, I mean, those things we. 
as you know, we can't get them built quick enough. Well, it, it's 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 funny that you brought that up because on that one, we've already, we had four, we built four originally. They sold really quick. Within a couple of weeks, once they got to a certain point, right, mm-hmm. those four went, I think within two weeks, we had all four of them pending. They all four closed about the same time. We had the other four going. We decided to keep one as a model so we can pre-sell the next ones that are coming right. up. Um, the other three have all went pending and they have all sold last week. So wow. we right now, we don't have anything under you know, under construction. We're just starting on the new ones. They'll be ready in December. They're three bedrooms, two and a half baths, two twenty nine nine. I mean, they're thirteen, a little over thirteen hundred square feet, um, and they're beautiful. You know, yeah. and and if you get in early enough, they're still like we have certain selections that we have, um, but you can pick within those, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just it's a neat um, product, and we're streamlining everything. Yeah. So it's just becoming smoother, and and the longer we work together, the smoother the better it becomes. It. Yeah. Well, one of the things that's been so impressive about those townhomes, I mean, for one, it's a location right in the heart of Sellersburg. Mm-hmm. Uh, for two, price point. And for three, I, I'm, I'm walk, seeing these these buyers walk away at closing with equity already. These homes are appraising for more than what you guys are selling them for. And there's some other benefits within that. Um, what are you doing for the buyers up there and in Murphy Homes? I know you guys are doing some financing options and stuff that's just incredible for these buyers. So this is so cool. Um, Chase is the builder there, and he is offering a $5,000 rate buy-down. And what's cool about that is it's a real rate buy down. Yes. Okay. So a lot of like a lot of what you hear right now in the market, they're doing these three, two, ones. Okay. Well, the reason you don't want to do that is because yeah, you're going to get that lower rate for the first or second year, but your payment's going to go up on that third year. Yeah. And not only that, you have to qualify at the higher rate. Mm-hmm. So what we're doing is we're qualifying people already at a fixed 1% lower rate. Mm-hmm. We can qualify them and it doesn't change on them. Their payment doesn't ever change. It's fixed for 30 years. It's fixed for 30 years and they love that. Mm-hmm. They love working with Andrew. They, he can explain all that stuff to them and it, it just, um, it's just a great incentive. You know, and he, and he's and Chase is just and I will tell you, like Chase, he's funny. He's a good old boy, right? Yeah. Good old country boy. Yeah. But I've known Chase for gosh, it's going on twenty years now. Um, our kids are actually married, and you know, it's it's just kind of neat. But um, he will. He is a builder that I love working with because he, if he sees something that needs to be done, like Chase will work to get it done. Yeah. You know, he wants to get the deal done. He wants to take care of his customer. He wants to do all those things. Yeah. And it, it's it's nice to work with him. Well, you know, I've worked with several builders over my 20 years in real mm-hmm. estate. And usually, and I'm not trying to be ugly because I understand builders have costs and, and all these things, these budgets they got to meet on building these homes. But usually it's kind of their way or the highway. Exactly. And, and what I've noticed about working with Chase, he's, he's pretty flexible. Like he's he very will kind of. He'll bend, he'll move. Now he's got to hit his numbers, but he'll do whatever he can to help the agent and the buyers get that deal done. I mean, sitting here paying a $5,000, you know, buy down Mm -hmm. off the sticker price. It's nothing extra. Nobody else is offering that. And And he's doing it across the board. Across the board on all his stuff. stuff. We tease him all the time about being the builder for the people, you know. The builder for the people. people. And and he loves hearing that. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, no, he really is. You know, he's got to stay within some lines. But, I mean, he really, I've seen him bend and move and flex to get these deals done. Well, and what I love about him, too, is I'm, if you can tell, a little high energy, high maintenance. Good energy. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm always like, oh, my gosh, this just happened. And, you know, even this morning I called him about the assessor thing. I'm like, you're not going to believe this. Da, 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 da. And he's like, dapper, dapper, dapper. <laughs> it's fine. It all works out. And he just doesn't stress. You know, yeah. he's got so much on his plate and he doesn't really let it get to him. And I admire that about him. Yeah, I asked it's him. Nice I said, to work with that. Chase, how do you, you know, how do you carry all the stress? Because, sure. you know, we're talking about millions of dollars, several different neighborhoods, flip houses. I couldn't do it. Apartments. Like yeah. the man's got a ton of stuff going on. And he said, well, I just learned that. If it's something that I can't change, why, why stress about it? Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, I told him, always, he needs to rub some of that on me. You know? I know because I, I stress. Me. I stress about everything. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> so, what is what is some of the stuff that you're you know other than the buy down that you're telling the buyers and just helping them even on on resale homes? What are some of the angles and stuff that you've worked over uh, over the last six months a year to help these guys get these homes? So, so, so he does some of these flip homes and he's, is that what you're asking me? I want yeah, to resale, sure resale for Murphy and just resale for somebody at church or 
you know, what, what's some things that you've been kind of helping advise buyers and sellers that, that's been working? Well, first of all, I, and this is, I'm not going to steal it because it's not mine. I just seen it recently and it's true. And it said, you know, when is the best time to buy a house? I, you've probably seen that meme, you know, five years ago. Five years ago. Right. Yeah. Like, like real estate is going to continually go up. It, this is the best time. Had I known that 20 years ago, I would have been investing Me too. way more than I, than I, well, I really didn't, right? I was just trying, the way we did it was buy a house, take that equity, buy another house, mm -hmm. buy a better house, da, 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 Raise you know, kids. <laughs> raise kids. And if I had to do it over, my goodness, how I would have invested back then. I would have right? never, I would have never sold any of the houses I bought. Right. Yeah. Like I flipped houses. I should have never flipped them. I should have kept them and rented them. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, I tell people all the time, I wish I'd have bought every house I sold like in 08, 9, 10, 11. Yeah. It would have been crazy. And it's going to happen 20 years from now. Yes. It's going to be the same story. And, and even though they're like, oh, well, rates are a little higher or, you know, house, houses seem really high. No, houses are really cheap. They're mm -hmm. going to get a lot higher. And so our kids now, because we're in a position that we can, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Our parents weren't in the position where they could really help us in that way. You know right, what I mean? Right. We're in a position where we can and we can give them. And we, we're so much more knowledgeable, mm -hmm. right? So like our kids... They bought a home, uh, you know, a little fixer upper. He, my son doesn't plan on selling his house. He's going to keep it. And that's that's his first rental property. Because nice. when they move in two years, he's going to take the equity out of that house. He's going to put it down on his next house. Take the equity out. Why did I know that? You know, Right. Equity. equity. What was that? And just keep the house. I yeah. sold the house and took the equity. Why did anybody tell me that? So he's going to take the equity out. He's going to then, you know, buy his next house and still keep that as a rental, mm -hmm. you know, and have them pay that off. And then, and then, and then eventually, right. He's just taking a hundred percent income on that. Mm -hmm. That's his, he calls it his first rental. That's a good I attitude. I love that. Yes. My daughter and her husband are doing the same thing. They're actually buying one of the townhomes because Smart. the townhomes are they're priced so good, yeah. right? And then you have that 10-year warranty on it. They're getting a brand new home. They're going to live in it for two years. This is their first rental. They don't plan on, on selling. No. This is their first rental, and then they're going to rent those. So my advice would be buy, 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 yep. and, and start using that equity wisely. Talk to me. Talk to Andrew. Talk to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, we we have learned. We've right? learned the Over hard way. <laughs> we learned the hard way. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's great advice, Debbie. I, I've been uh, telling a lot of my clients, you know, like you're looking for a three, two, but maybe you can't afford it in today's, uh, you know, times. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's, let's get you in a two, one if we can, because at least you're getting your foot in the door. Sure. You're going to start building that equity. Maybe that'll be your first rental mm -hmm. and you use that to pay for your second house or second rental or your dream home. Sure. Uh, and, and right now, honestly, the rent is going up. I mean, you're better off to just buy. Buy. Bye. Yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. And and like I said, and use that equity. Gosh, I wish I would have known that. I know it. Equity. Right? equity. We could have been that rich. invisible money. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we've seen, you know, there's more Americans, there's more equity in the households in America now than there ever has been. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that just goes to show that, you know, if you're if you're thinking about buying or renting, it's a no brainer buy. It is. It may make you sweat. One month or two or something, but sure. Twenty years down the road, even ten years down the road, you're gonna look back like we have mm -hmm. and go, "Man, I wish I'd have bought more." Well, and honestly, Andrew and I are looking at the townhomes. We're thinking about buying a double side and start renting that. I'm, I just think it's a good investment. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm considering it mm -hmm. quite honestly because mm -hmm. uh, it's you know for a rental that's brand new. Brandon. You don't have any issues. Nothing okay. I got to worry about. I got a 10-year warranty. Yeah. You know, they can move in. It's ready. And, you know, the rates are the rates. But the, yeah. the, the I think the, I'm seeing those homes probably it will get up to around $2,500 a month. Yeah. They're already it's a no-brainer. Yeah. It's a no-brainer. So if you can pay two, what are they at? $219, $229 now? $229.9. $229. Nine. $229. Yeah. Um, and you can get twenty five hundred a yeah. month. It's a no brainer. Oh yeah. And, and the whole time, a lot of people miss that they look at just what they're making on their payment. Right. Well, my mortgage is fifteen hundred, and I'm getting two thousand. I'm only making five hundred a month. No, you're making five hundred a month. The tenant's paying for it, and the price of your home's going up. Yeah. Equity. You're yes. gaining equity and a payment, and mm -hmm. that's really where you're making your money. And oh, yeah. then, like you said, when it when it pays itself off someday, if you need money, you go back in and grab that equity oh, and yeah. use it for something else. Mm -hmm. So. Well, Debbie, I really appreciate you having yeah, coming and being on our nice. show today. It's been a blast as always. I was really excited to have you on because I knew it'd be fun. <laughs> so um, thank you for watching Kentucky and our Real Talk. And don't forget, for more local real estate information, subscribe to the Jeremy Ward Team YouTube page.